Hey, hey, Internet. Welcome back to Geek Techniques Plugged In 2010, our tutorial slash web blogging YouTube channel. Tonight we are going to feature some small tutorials, uh, somewhat brief in capabilities, probably a two, maybe three part session, uh, basic icon creation in Adobe Photoshop for the Web 2.0 uh, capable graphics and clarity. These are primarily base icons used in the Android environment. Uh, over here at Geek Technique we use a lot of Android Incredibles and Droid X's along with Evos uh, all using um, the Android 2.2 operating system. The icons that will be created today in this tutorial will be based on the 85 by 85 pixel dimension. Uh, as a base icon for creating your own text based icons on top or graphicals layered type uh, motifs. So tonight's tutorial is just going to basically be the base web 2.0 glossy style icon enabling any of you creative users out there to create another layer and overlay a graphic or a piece of text creating an application space type icon. So without further ado uh, we'll move on. Tonight's work environment provided to you is by Windows Microsoft 7 Ultimate Edition 64-bit um, utilizing Photoshop CS5 as our creative our, um, creative software. Quick thanks to the team over at Fluxbox Media and the Fandroid.com community. Uh, it was through Fluxbox Media's team uh, indicating to us that there had been some chatter on the forums about somebody providing a tutorial. I know that they did a write-up. I did check that out. We're going to run our tutorial tonight very similar to that for this creational um, excerpt. And um, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments below or contact Fluxbox Media as they work hand in hand in a lot of projects with us uh, here over at Geek Technique. Um, we have a lot of respect for their artists over there at Flexbox Media as well as the Android community and we figured that this would be a great way to give back. Uh, so without further ado, let's get to the tutorial. Uh, like I said, we're in Windows 7 today with Adobe Photoshop CS5. This tutorial does apply to Adobe Photoshop CS3, CS4, and CS5, both uh, normal versions as well as extended versions. So most of the features and functionalities that you see tonight uh, can be attained and can be used in those three versions. Okay, first off, quick little overview for those of you that are novice users or new users to the Photoshop environment. What you see here is going to be your standard Photoshop layout with the tools on the left hand side and your layers, channels, and paths navigator on the right hand side. For the remainder of the tutorial, we will be primarily staying in the layers navigation panel. Uh, creating new layers, working with layers, and blending options. Occasionally I will be using hotkey controls or keyboard shortcuts as they call them. Uh, if I go to use one I will let you know what it is. Uh, I've been working with Photoshop for quite some time as well as many of the artists that work at Fluxbox Media as well as some of them that work here on staff at Geek Technique. Uh, we tend to hotkey a lot through Photoshop rather than doing drop down menus. Um, so if I run into one I will make sure that I let you know what it is and what it does uh, and then you'll see the results on the screen. So let's begin. First things first, you're going to need to create a new document. So we'll go to File, go to New. You can also hit Control N and that will create the new document. We're going to call this one New 2.0 Icon. Um, for the palette size, or I should say the canvas in this kind of tutorial, we're going to leave it at 200 by 200. Um, and the reason for that is, is it gives us a good working space to deal with the icon and how it wants to uh, really shape the color and really shape its um, image. Uh, we're going to leave the resolution between 72 and 96. It's really your choice. I use 96 because it looks the best on the LCD devices such as the Droid Incredible, the Droid X, and the Evo. Um, we are going to leave the color mode at RGB, 8-bit, and your background contents are going to be transparent. This allows for transparency across the icon if we should delve into that throughout the tutorial. I don't believe we will be, but in case. So with that, we'll press OK. Your creative canvas will show up, indicated by an equilateral four-sided square in the middle of the screen. Equilateral meaning four equal sides. And you'll notice some things have shown up at the top, indicating the paint 
or the fill bucket tool, which one it's pointing for for the fill of where, foreground or background, what kind of mode, normal blend, overlay screen, etc. How well the opacity is for the color that you're filling in, and the tolerance level uh, based on the color. Over on the right hand side you'll see the layers navigation panel again which we were first working with. Quick little tutorial for that for those of you who are new because this is kind of key to you new users and new creative people out there which we encourage. Uh, the whole idea behind this is to bring more people into the creative comfortabilities of their own home and creating their own icons to express their Android experience. First off, the drop down menu that you'll see here features all the different types of modes we can set this layer to be operational in normal, dissolve, dark, and multiply, lighten, screen, overlay, and the list goes on. You can play with these on your own time. I highly recommend it. Uh, and playing with different functions and features to allow you to see what it does for the image. Uh, we're going to leave it on normal. Uh, to the right of that is going to be the opacity. This is pretty much what I was uh, talking about when I first started creating this. This allows you to either make it transparent or make it opaque. Uh, lots of color or no color at all. Um, see-through, not see-through is basically what that explains. And fill is how much do you want the fill color in the interior layer of if there's a shape or a text if you want it, say, solid or not solid. So that's just to give you an idea what those are. Now that we have the canvas there, I've went over the tutorial of the lower layer, lower right layer navigator. We're going to create a shape. In this case, we're going to select a color tonight. We're gonna, I'm gonna do a kind of a black icon. Um, I want to kind of show a glossy black icon because I think black is really sharp. Uh, I know Fluxbox has done a lot with the glossy icons uh, on their website over there at. Um, fluxboxmedia.extremehost.com with their sports packs. Black always looked good to me, so we're going to do black to, to, to showcase this tonight. Once we've done that, we're going to select the rectangle tool. If rounded rectangle is not already selected, left click and hold, you'll see your different choices and shapes. We're going to use rounded rectangle for this tutorial. Once you've done that, go to the upper left hand corner and we're going to drag down and create a rounded rectangle that takes up about 90% of the entire canvas, uh, leaving about one pixel box on all sides. And we're going to go ahead and it seems to have created this on its own and it wasn't supposed to, which is fine. So we're going to close this out and we're going to tell this no. We're going to exit for a second real quick. The reason why that happened was that was the last swatch that was brought into the last tutorial and the last project. So I, I apologize for that. And we can move on. So here we go. We'll load up our Photoshop again real quick. Click New. I'm going to breeze through this. 2.0 Web Demo. 200, 200. Boom, boom, boom. Those all look good to me. All right, hopefully it creates a black one. There we go, now we've got the black shape. And the layer navigator over on the right hand side, you'll see the layer mask as well as the vector mask of the shape. We'll be working very intricately with both of these. So the first thing we are going to want to do is we're going to right click on this and go up to blending options and click left. Here we're going to intricately take colors away and add colors and add depth and add um, clarity to the entire picture as a whole for the icon. So first things first in this options we will take the fill opacity down to zero. In the inner shadow we're going to check this box. We're going to leave it to that. We're going to set the blend mode to overlay. Leave it at black. And we're going to check the size in here. We're going to take this up to about 30 uh, I'm going to say between 35 and 45 is good. I'm going to do 42 for the all intents and purposes. Actually, I'm going to take it down to 32. Um, I had it a little higher earlier and it didn't look that great. So we're going to do 32. Uh, we're also going to set the outer glow. Outer glow needs to be the same color as what your original shadow color or your original icon color was. So you click on that and it'll bring up the color picker. Left click one time, that is. Um, you can choose from the colors here or you can bring your mouse over here to your palette and eyedropper that and it will give you the color that you started with which is what we want. So we then click OK and we're going to tell the size of this to be 
uh, about between 5 pixels and 12 and that just gives the shadow all the way around or the outer glow all the way around the actual icon. Now that we have the outer glow and the inner shadow created, uh, we're going to now add the inner glow. And the inner glow is going to be um, much like the color we had too. So we're going to add the black. We're going to click it just like we did before. We're going to set that and press OK. We're going to also go up to this and set this to overlay. And a quick little overview, real quick, to recap. Inner is always going to be overlay. So inner and inner are overlay. See how they're both overlay settings? And outer glow is always going to be screen. So just keep that as a note. It really helps when you create more of these and you don't have to keep going back and going, well, what did I set to that? Now you know. So inner glow is going to be considered on overlay blend mode, and it's going to be black. And its size, this is where we're going to take this up. Normally you want to take this in the 50s, but I'm going to keep it in the 35 to 45. You really need to play around with this. When you get to darker colors, you want to leave it lower. When you use the lighter colors, you want to leave it higher. So just kind of play with it and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and these are all editable after you get the color in there so you can actually see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go with 38, 37 and leave it. And now we're going to bring in the full color. I'm going to add the black gradient. As you'll notice, when we added the shadows and all these functions up here, it started to make this look very 3D-ish. That's exactly what we're looking for. However, the color's a little off. I want a black to black. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the gradient. And we are going to... Hold on one second. We're going to select the colors that we want to use for the gradient. And in this case, the gradient needs to be the black and a black. But because we're using double black... Um, I'm going to use this foreground one right here real quick and go black with gray as the stop. And I'm going to bring this color gray down to black just a little bit closer, kind of like in here, like that. So it kind of gives that charcoal effect. Um, and then I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to click reverse just to see what I see, um, which way you like it. I personally kind of like it that way. but for this intents and purposes we're going to go radial so I'm going to need to reverse it. So now that I've reversed it and it's radial, that's what you'll want, you're going to want to mess with the scale. If you take down the scale you'll notice the gray goes down or the charcoal color goes smaller in size. In this tutorial you really want to play with this and find out where it goes. The idea is to create the icon so that it looks like a very very realistic 2.0 glossy type icon. So I'm going to leave it at about a 90 95 looks good, 96. I'll we'll leave it right here. Um, and then we'll press, press OK. So now we've kind of got this um, black charcoal type icon base and it really kind of pops. So what I want to do though is I want to add a little bit more depth and a little bit more layer to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control and we're going to left click. So hold down the control key and left click on this shape. You'll notice that this starts to illuminate or outline trace, which means it's selected that shape. We're going to create a new layer by moving your mouse to the very bottom down here and clicking this where it says create new layer or holding control N. Um, or go up here to layer, new, shift control N. Um, now that we've got the layer already here, we can control or actually we are going to fill this with gray. The gray you want is eight.